Happy Finish Friday, everybody. I am excited to show you today how to create five different finishes with waxes on top of the black one step paint. So if you've never tuned in before, my name is Amy Howard and welcome. This is a day that we set aside to be able to sh show you how to create different finishes on furniture, your kitchen cabinets. And if you're new to Amy Howard at Home, I really invite you to join our before and after group it's called Amy Howard at Home Before and After Group, and it's a closed group that you can join, and you'll be able to see all the amazing um, projects that people are doing, and as well be part of a very supportive, loving, positive community. So, if you are tuning in, please send me some love, send me some hearts, tell me where you're tuning in from, just say hi, and, um, and if you have questions, I don't answer them live now because we record it and we'll send it out later on in the week so that way you have it as a reference tool um, on how to be able to learn these finishes, but we will be going back and answering your questions. So that way just pop on there and ask me. All right, so let me just go over really quickly the products that um, I'm going to be working with and it's going to show you the versatility that you can get just by what you put on top of something that's painted in the black one step. So I have this over here just to show you. Um, as always, when you're working on a piece of furniture, you want to clean it first with our clean slate. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, I clean it with TSP or I clean it with vinegar or I clean it. It's like, guys, part of the, what we saw the problems of people rescuing and restoring furniture was that they needed something that was going to get off the wax and the surfactants. And this is literally a furniture refinisher's quality grade um, wax remover. So. Um, and guess what? Here's what's exciting. A lot of you don't know this, but we have now a pull top that's inside so it doesn't leak anymore when we ship it. So we're really excited about that. If you've ordered it before and it leaked, this is leak proof. So, um, all right. So you want to make sure that you clean your piece first. And then here is the new container as far as the picture. If you see the half and half on here, you know this is the brand new One Step Formula um, here at Amy Howard at Home. It has essential oils in it. It smells amazing, the coverage is amazing, and it's self-leveling. So you're gonna see a lot of difference in this new formula than the original formula. All right, and it comes in 100 colors. So if you wanna be able to see those colors, you can go to our website, just go under One Step, and you'll see those hand-painted color cards there that you can get. And if you're like me, I carry it in my purse, that way I can refer to it when I wanna work on projects. I just look and see what color I wanna use. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is one. I'm going to move these products out of the way and then I'm going to grab them as we work on them um, on our piece of trim because I want to show you how with just one color with several different techniques how it can look totally different. All right, so I've put one coat of the one step on here. You know, as always, we, we say one step, but it's not one coat. So when you're working on a piece of furniture, a lot of times you're going to need to put two thin coats on. All right, so I'm going to leave this one plain because I want you to be able to see um, a black matte finish. Now, black matte finishes on light fixtures, on doors, all that type thing are very much on trend. So a lot of people will say, Amy, what's the difference between your one-step paint that is a chalk-based paint, it does have calcium carbonate in it, it is not a glorified acrylic paint. It is a beautiful chalk-based paint that will adhere to almost any surface that you don't have to strip, sand, or prime. But you do not have to seal it. So you can get water on it. Um, we did a test, um, literally we took a bag of ice and we set a bag of ice on the one step and we allowed it to completely melt and pour onto the floor. And then when it dried off, there was not even a ring mark from the water. So you will not get ring marks with this. You do not have to seal it if you don't want to. The reason for adding things like waxes, different paints, ceruzian wax, dust of ages, that type thing, is because it's going to transform the look. It can be metallic, you can add red to it, so that's why I want to show you this today. It's a lot of fun and um, it can be a really a major difference in your finish. All right, so I'm going to show you um, just with using Mind Your Own Beeswax. This is um, another wax that we have. This is a, a beeswax. I'm going to squeeze just a little bit out here. Doesn't take much. And um, a brush. Now, I will tell people, use a synthetic brush. It will lay the paint down. Um, so a synthetic brush is not a natural bristle. But when you get ready to use wax, you don't use a synthetic brush. You use a 
um, a natural bristle. Our chip brushes that are chip, these um, natural bristle chip brushes, they're double the size as an average chip brush, so it allows you better coverage. When they're brand new, sometimes the um, sometimes the uh, the hairs will come out, so you want to just try to pull on it just a little bit. But I'm going to load this up, and I'll evenly kind of move this around so I want my wax evenly distributed in my brush like this. So I'm going to come in this area right here, and I'm just going to apply it. Now I want you to be able to see, if you want to be able to just come back after you've painted your piece in the one step, that's all you do. You're just going to load up your brush with the Mondrome Beeswax, and then leave that on there. Allow that to dry about 30 minutes, depending on the heat and the humidity. It's hot in here in Memphis today. It's, it's a beautiful summer day in June, but it's hot and humid. So, but I'm gonna allow that to dry about 30 or 45 minutes, and then I'm gonna buff it. And it's gonna have a beautiful, natural waxed patina. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the next one that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little bit of Chinese red and they made this for me just now. I felt really bad because they were, they were making hundreds of orders back there. And I'm like, can I have a little bit of Chinese red in a pipe? All right, so I'm going to add just a little bit of Chinese red. And then I'm going to take some Mindrome Beeswax. Now, normally this is a little thicker, but it's been really hot. Um, and so it's, it has a tendency to be a little thinner. Now, watch this. I'm going to take a little bit of my brush. I'm going to dip it into my wax and then I'm gonna come over here into my paint. As a rule, you're gonna do about one part paint to two parts wax. And I like doing this more as a, a dry brushing effect. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a custom wax. After I've loaded my brush up, I'm gonna offload it just a little bit more. I don't want it to be too heavy. evenly distributed on your brush like that. And now, um, this again, if you're just now popping on, be sure and tell me where you're tuning in from. Ask me questions, I'll be answering them later. And I'm showing you five different ways to be able to create five different finishes on just the uh, black one-step paint. All right, so now I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna dry brush it. Where I did more of a solid covering here, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna kinda dry brush it just a little bit. I don't wanna put it too, too heavy. And the only problem with this from a time perspective with you guys here today, if I hold that up, is that just a little bit better? Is the time perspective here today is the fact that I want it to kind of set so that way I can show you what this is going to look like when I come back and actually wear it through. Because I'm not going to leave it solid like this. Once this comes to tack, I'm going to add some dust of ages, and then I'm going to steel wool that back and set that back. So it's going to pull that black back through, and it's going to almost look like the red was underneath the black originally. I love that. All right, I'm going to make it just a little darker here on the edges. And hopefully that can dry by the time I get finished. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I want to be able to show you, this is our Cerisian Wax. Again, I'm just working on the one-step black that's going to show me. You could do the same thing um, with maybe a gray color or red color, whatever color, your coral color, to be able to test it and see all the different looks you can get with just one color. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of ceruzing wax. I'm gonna squeeze this out. The ceruzing wax is a, um, a carnauba wax with calcium carbonate added to it. And basically that's um, chalk. So I'm gonna, again, load up my brush. I'm using a natural bristle. So I'll just take a little bit from it like that and then make sure it's evenly distributed in my brush and then offload it just a little bit. You don't want to go too heavy. You can always add more, but you don't want it to be too terribly heavy. All right, so I'm going to, you see kind of the dry brush effect that you get. It's kind of crazy when you think about how quickly you can transform. I want to make sure but I don't neglect that edge. It's fun to see how you can transform paint with just waxes. Do this just a little heavier. And 
and I'm going to come back. It's not going to stay like that. I'm going to show you what it's going to look like in just a minute. All right, so now my next one, I'm going to um, do light and dark wax. Now, let me open these up and show you. We have a lot of different waxes, and they do different things. Some people will ask me, well, Amy, what's the difference between this puck and what's the difference between this? First of all, it's the color. Can you see this? This has uh, beeswax in it. And so it will make it a little bit more like an amber color. It still looks kind of clear, even though this has a pale yellow color, it will go on completely clear. So you don't have to order the clear wax. This will look clear on your piece. All right, so when I am working with my um, pucks, I like working with a round hog hair. This will allow you to be able to put the wax on a piece of furniture as far as doing the whole thing in um, a fraction of the time than using a, ch a smaller chip brush. Now, here's something that we want to point out that's really, really important. These two guys are married. You can use this light antique wax all by itself. Absolutely. You cannot use the dark wax by itself. He has to go with the light wax. So your light wax always goes on first. And then once it comes to tack, do not put this dark wax on before this white wax has kind of come to tack. If you put the dark wax on while this is still kind of greasy and it's moving around, what's going to happen? You're going to create a third wax. So I'm going to load up my hog here. You want to make sure it's evenly distributed. And it's very, very important. Always offload it. Sometimes I use cardboard. I use whatever is on hand. Just I just want to make sure that you don't go directly from this container onto your piece of furniture. So then I'm going to, doesn't take much at all. All right. So that way I've got some of that on there. Now, now I'm going to come back with my dark wax. The dark wax is not going to show up a whole lot when you're working on this because on the black it's not going to show up where if I was working on maybe Bauhaus buff or even Chinese red or a French blue or a Lux gray um, those are all yummy colors but if I was working on those it's going to show up a lot more part of the reason why I like using dark wax on black is because I have noticed over the years it does really create a richness to the finish that I can't get any other way. All right, so part of the reason I'm fanning this is because I need this to come to tack. Right now, if I touch this, it's greasy. It's still moving around. And actually, I'm gonna probably move on to the next one just to give this another couple of minutes to be able to dry. I'll just hit these along the way. Isn't this fun? Already, just being able to see, working with one color, how totally different they can be. All right, so I'm gonna set my light wax aside because I'm finished with him. And I want to show you as far as working with embellishing waxes. Now these are two of our embellishing waxes. One is a gold metallic and one is a silver metallic. So a lot of people like um, adding a little bit of glitz to their piece. And it's very easy to do. These go a long, long way. And it's strictly as simple as adding a metallic wax. So I'm going to grab one of my chip brushes again. And I'm going to load up with this gold embellishing wax. It doesn't take much. All right. And then I'm going to offload it just a little bit. I don't want to have too much. That way it's evenly distributed. Now, so fun. All right, now, you are, are you ready? Let me turn this up so you can see it just a little bit. So if you're wanting to add a little bit of metallic, just like when I do the red, I'll kind of put it everywhere and then I'll come back and I'll steel wool it so where I take some off because I don't want it to be too overdone. And this is really more of a dry brushing effect. It gives you um, more of an iridescent. It's going to pick up on these carved areas. It's going to be a little bit harder to do a metallic wax finish on something that's flatter but you can still do it. You can come back with some steel wool and soften it out. All right, so let's come back to my light antique wax. I'm going to fan it just another couple of seconds. Look at this. Now, we're not finished, but just already, look at that. See all the different colored waxes and things that we're doing just on top of one color. 
you're going to see how different it can be. All right, so I'm going to make, I want this light antique wax to come to tack just a little bit faster. And if you're popping on, please tell me, send me some love, tell me where you're from. And if you know somebody that loves redoing furniture, um, I would love for you to be able to share this with them and tell them and say, you know, she does teach you. Um, she, and I think those of you who know me and if you've followed me long enough, that's my heart as a teacher that I love. Um, I love helping you work through a frustration of being able to do a, a painted furniture project. Our One Step Paint makes it so easy. It's such a great starting point. But if you're going to rescue and restore a piece of furniture, um, I love showing you how just simply as easy with using waxes. You don't have to do glazes. Waxes can make it look like it's been glazed. But there's a process with it, and that's why I'm kind of taking you through this. All right, so I'm going to load up my dark wax. This actually has bitumen in it. Bitumen gives us that beautiful color that's not too green. It's a darker color, more of a black, and I'm going to offload it. I don't want to have too much on there. All right, now I'm going to let that set for just a minute because I don't need to put my dust of ages on here before it has a tendency to be able to come up and dry but I need to make sure that it's not completely dry before I add the dust of ages. All right, so I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. Let's check my red. I think I'm good. All right, so look what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our dust of ages. You need to make sure that you get a clean, dry brush. And I will usually mark on here, dark wax, light wax, and dust of ages. And you always wanna keep them separated. If you wanna clean the wax out of your brushes, just use a clean slate because the waxes are petroleum based, they're not water based. So they're going to have to be cleaned with a clean slate. Um, and then that way I store them up so that way they're in good condition next time you want to be able to use them. All right, so here we come with our dust of ages. So load up your clean brush, it doesn't need to be damp at all. Tap it on the side. You want to get some of that excess off, but at the same time it's down in the crevices. Now, I would really recommend, um, isn't it odd? Think about, I keep dust mask in my car hanging on my, um, Gene, what's that thing called that's on my car? <laughs> Whatever. No, it's the thing that hangs where my steering wheel is. We hang um, face wiper, mask there. Wiper my wiper arm. So I hang my mask on there now. But So I would like, if you're working on this, you're not having to talk and teach somebody, um, wear a mask because I don't want you inhaling this. All right, so I've just got to make sure that I've got enough on here. And again, I'm working with our dust of ages. And I'm going to come back on top of our red just a little bit. And it's pretty, I'm pretty liberal. I'm pouncing it down in there. I want to make sure that it's down in the crevices. I'm not going to do it on top of my, um, on top of my cerusian wax. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Because this Mindrome beeswax has come to tack, I may put some on here just a little bit. Because I want to be able to show you. If you put this dust of ages on before your before your wax has come to tack, it's going to go too dark. And this is the perfect color that I want it to be. Let me check on my white and dark. It's still kind of tacky. All right, so now I'm going to take some steel wool. Can you get a close-up in here? So that way these got I need to stay close enough. All right. So now I'm going to start with a lint-free rag to just see what I can do as far as pulling this. Look at this. We need to keep my, my end one down here clean because that's my mat that I wanted to show you that we didn't do anything on. This we added nothing. This is just the black one step all by itself. Now look at this. You're going to see now. Guys, this is so simple, so easy, but look at the difference. Now, I'm going to take my tape away. I painted this right before we went live, so please let my paint be dry. All right, so I'm going to clean that off. Hold on, I'm going to be able to get a difference. Look at this. Can you see that on the camera? Look at this. So. Very easily you can see, this is a matte finish, and here it is just with the wax and the dust of ages. Now we have, 
more of a beautiful cabinet finish. I love it. It's, it's rich, it's incredible. Now, while I love things that are matte black, they're great too, but this takes it to a whole new level. And all it is, is mind your own beeswax and dust of ages. All right, so now here's the one. What do we do with this one? We mixed mind your own beeswax with just a little bit of the Chinese red one step. So we had a red wax and we put it over the black. Now. Let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna dust off the excess just a little bit. And then I'm gonna buff it. Now, you know, it's all, oh gosh, can you get a close up of this? Guys, do you see this? Now, a lot of times when I'm working with a colored wax and I'm adding the dust of ages and I'm buffing it, let me keep that clean so that way you can see. I'll come back with some steel wool. So let me take my tape off. I'm so glad that we're doing this today. Tell me where you're from. And be sure if you, um, if you haven't, um, if you're just now popping on, you wanna join our before and after group on Facebook. And so that way you can see all the projects that different people are doing. Now I'm buffing this. I made sure that my wax had come to tack. You want it to dry enough to be able to have tack. Look at this, see my black showing through? Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of four odd steel wool, and what this does, it's gonna pull that red wax, it's gonna pull that red wax, it's gonna give me a little bit more of a strie effect, and um, it's gonna pull that, that black underneath through, make it look a little distressed, then I'll come back and I'll buff it, look at that. So I could do this with almost any color. All right, so I'm working my way down. I want you to be able to see the difference in just creating these different waxes. Now, here's what I added, the ceruzzi wax on top of the black. Simple as putting on the black one step and adding a wax. So now I'm gonna come back with my four alt steel wool over my ceruzzi wax. Let me lay this down for just a minute. I'm gonna remove this. Does this help? Guys, does this help? Tell me. Does it help you to be able to see? Oh my gosh, I had no idea that I could do all these different finishes just with a different wax on top of it. So now I'm going to take some steel wool here and I'm pulling the ceruzzing wax after it's come to tack through so that way it's going to make it go down in the crevices. I didn't add any dust of ages on this one. Look at this. Isn't that fab? Do y'all love that? I'm loving it. It's just the simplicity of it and how beautiful it can look. Now, because my light and my dark wax hasn't really dried a whole lot, I'm going to come on down to my gold. And I'm going to buff it before I steel wool it. So that way I can kind of see what it is that I'm looking at. And I want, it to, I want the gold to be more set back. Now, if you've never worked with our embellishing waxes, we have gold copper and silver and they are so easy to use and they go a long long way so one of these little containers will do an entire piece of furniture so if you're wanting to do a nightstand or a chest of drawers that's going to be plenty now look at this i'm going to take my steel wool pull that through i want to pull some of that black out and it will also kind of minimize my gold just a little bit if i wanted to i could add just a little bit of dust of ages look at that isn't that fabulous? So I've got metallic, I've got my ceruzzing, I've got my red, so I can mix up any color that I want. And then I've got my mind, mind your own beeswax with just dust of ages. Now, you know, I could take it that much further and I could add maybe um, some gilding on the side, but remember this, if you wanna be able to um, add gilding, you wanna make sure that it's before you do the wax. No sealer, no anything goes on top of this. Once you've applied the wax, the only thing you're going to be using is your dust of ages. So hopefully showing you today with this one piece of black one step done all these different ways shows you the versatility of how waxes can truly give you so many different looks. This is just the beginning. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and I'll see you at the estate sales.